Completing a Stuart triple expansion engine part 9. Working on parts of the engine that were never completed. I've been trying to get into the mindset of the man who built this. The majority of the parts are really well made. And then things that were made later on in the build went a bit downhill. And were either not very well made or not made at all. The guide bars for the crosshead line up fine with the crossheads but they don't line up perfectly with the mounting bracket that runs along the side of the engine. Later on in the video I will show you how I drill a hole in the mounting bracket to accept this crosshead guide. Now the top part of the engine is free from its mountings, it's a good time to pack the glands both on the piston rod and the valve rod. Because believe me it is not easy when the engine is assembled and your hands are this size. What I'm doing at the moment using both of my large hands is removing the nuts that hold the gland in place. The holes in these glands are a little bit tight on the studs. I've already enlarged the holes on the valve gland. Even though this stuffing gland isn't packed with anything, once I remove the nuts, the top part is reluctant to part company with the hole in the cylinder cover. But with my small screwdriver I just leave it free. I will enlarge these holes very slightly before I put it all back together. I'm using the right angled end of my scriber to confirm that there isn't any gland packing in the gland itself. Recently I bought a new type of gland packing, not graphited yarn, this is teflon coated yarn and it seems to work very well. In my opinion this stuff is so much better than the modern version of graphited yarn which is terrible stuff to use. I bought a short length of this teflon coated yarn and it's woven together so all I have to do is unweave it and I end up with several lengths of this yarn which is perfect for models of this size. I'm applying some oil to the gland just to make sure it's got some lubrication. Whatever you do, do not pack the gland too tightly. Two things can happen here. One being the gland packing can actually score the piston rod if it's too tight and once I was packing the gland on a Stuart S50 engine with a gunmetal cylinder and I actually managed to split the casting where the gland was on the cylinder. The best way to approach it is to firmly tighten the nuts and then back them off a very small amount. If you look carefully at this image you will see that the part of the crosshead that holds the crosshead itself firmly to the guide bar is only held in place by two bolts. What I now need to do is drill out the two holes tapping size for 7BA all the way through the steel part of the crosshead and just for a change I'm using a Proxon motor tool in my small drill press. This is very convenient as it's right next to where I sit at the bench and it's a far more sensitive drilling machine than my main big drilling machine and with this small Proxon drill not having quite the power of the large one there's less chance of breaking the drill off in the work. It didn't appear to be drilling very well, but then I remembered that this was the drill bit that I used in an attempt to drill out the broken stud in the low pressure cylinder, and the end of it was very blunt. Once I changed the drill bit for a new one, it cut through the steel parts perfectly. I then enlarged the gun metal part to be clear in size for 7BA, and then, using a tap, I threaded the steel part. Notice the spot of oil on the bench. I generally do this when I'm tapping, it's very convenient just to re-lubricate the tap by touching it on the bench. And don't forget when you tap holes, whichever size they are, you always need to back off the tap, don't just turn it clockwise all the time, otherwise it may just lock up and break when you do try to withdraw it. And that wouldn't be a good thing to do at this stage of the process. The job was successful and now I need to find two 7BA bolts. I looked in my box of 7BA bolts but I couldn't find any of the right size believe it or not. Then I remembered that I removed some that were holding the steam pipes in place. And they're exactly the right length and exactly the right size so I used a couple of those. When I finally finish the steam piping I'm going to hold that in place to the cylinder block using studs and nuts. So the bolts were surplus to requirements. Here you can see the finished job and you can also see that there's various bits of swarf all over it but before I put it back together, finally, I will give all of the parts a thorough clean. With the crosshead at the full extent of its travel, it's now time to find the final position where the guide bar mounts to the long bracket on the side of the engine. As you can see in this clip, it's not lining up very well. This is partly due to the fact that the hole in the guide bar isn't exactly in the centre. 
And that's what I was talking about earlier. As the work progressed on this engine, the workmanship started to slip a little bit. But luckily, all of the essential parts, like the bottom end and the cylinders, are very well made indeed. I'm holding the cylinder casting in the perfect position. First of all, I use my felt tip deep hole marker and also my scriber to make sure the hole that I'm going to drill is in the right place. You may be also interested to know that I've allowed for the thickness of the gasket that's going in between the two cylinder halves. The gasket material will be 1 32nd of an inch thick. As you can see, the hole is not in the centre of the bracket. I could, I suppose, reprofile the bracket, but I think it will look okay when it's done anyway. Before drilling the hole, I covered the crankshaft with a cloth. And in this clip, I'm using the Proxon drill that normally sits in the drilling machine to drill the hole in the mounting bracket, being very careful not to go all the way through. This drill is ideal for this sort of a job because it gets in places where a bigger one doesn't. The other alternative is to use the flexible drive attachment, but I do prefer this drill because I can see when it's in perfect alignment with the bracket. The last thing I want to do is to drill this hole at an angle, but in the end I didn't do that, I drilled the hole as accurately as possible. Now it's time to thread the hole using a 7BA tap, but there is a problem, I can't use my standard tap wrench because the handle fouls the base casting. I just change it for one of a set of pin vices, and these are very useful when it comes to jobs like this. I really don't need to apply much pressure to tap a 7BA hole in a piece of gun metal. After I finish the threading, I check that the hole is OK by fitting a 7BA bolt, and it looks good. Ever since I first saw a photograph of this engine, I was concerned about this. One of the studs is directly in line with the part of the casting on the side of the cylinder where I will be fitting drain cocks, or a drain cock, should I say. This is the only drain cock I currently have, so I've just ordered some more, and I will need to drill and thread some holes 5 16 by 40 threads per inch to fit them. But this could be a problem if the stud goes all the way down into the cylinder where I want to drill the hole. I removed the nut and then the stud, and to my relief, it's a very short one. The stud, I mean. This should be okay. I need to drill a hole, which will be 5 30 seconds of an inch by 40 threads per inch, just deep enough to take the threads of the drain cock. The holes that are drilled through into the cylinder to drain the water will be a sixteenth of an inch diameter. I'm making progress, but the progress is slow. So far, I think I've got about 50 hours in this job. Don't forget the job doesn't progress at the speed you see it at. The cylinder covers have to come off, the pistons have to come out, so I can fit everything with gaskets. It would be very foolish to do otherwise. In the next video of the series, I'll be showing how I machine the slide valve for the intermediate cylinder. The cross on it is just a rough cross that I put on it, it's not the marking out. I'm pleased with the progress so far though. This outer part of the cylinder block is now more or less complete, except for a couple of drain cocks and gaskets on the upper and lower cylinder covers. That's it for this episode. Make sure you stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.